Welcome back to our wetlands classroom. In our last video, you heard from Matt and Andy and Allison about how wetlands help you every day. The three P's, purify, provide, and protect. Today, on this beautiful fall morning, we're gonna talk about sea level rise, erosion, and coastal wetland loss, and how those losses affect coastal flooding and human safety. We're gonna visit three sites today that have all had coastal wetland loss and show how those effects affect the safety of Delaware residents. And we'll look at innovative ways that DENREC is working to protect those residents. The Delaware Bay is unique for many reasons. One of them are coastal wetlands that encircle the entire bay almost continuously. In New Jersey, from Cape May up to the Delaware Memorial Bridge, and then on the western shore in Delaware, all the way down to Cape Henlopen, we have these coastal marshes. While flooding occurs uh, quite often along the coast, because of these wetlands, it is less than it would be. When you have a wetland, when waves come in from the storm, the energy is absorbed. This diminishes the storm surge, it uh, stops uh, sediment erosion from the coast, it reduces flooding, which means there's less damage to property and human well-being and safety. On average, Delaware is the lowest state in the nation, so it's not surprising that it's already feeling the effects of sea level rise on our marshes and on our infrastructure. If sea level rise rates continue at the current level, within 100 years, 98% of all coastal wetlands will be gone. And when they are gone, the benefits they provide to the state will be gone with them. So normally salt marshes strike a balance between naturally sinking or subsiding and naturally building their elevation or accreting. And accretion occurs when fresh sediments are brought in um, through daily tide cycles, a storm event, or a large flood and the fresh sediments are trapped by the vegetation on the marsh. They settle out of the water column. However, with rising sea level rates, the sediments are not able to build quickly enough and the marsh loses elevation over time and eventually converts to open water. And when that happens, these wetlands and the natural benefits that they provide are lost as well. In 2012, Denrick began investigating an innovative approach to salt marsh restoration that's been used in other parts of the U.S like Louisiana, Texas, and now Maryland. We're using, we're looking at using um, dredged material and applying it to nearby wetlands that are in need of elevation. This is called beneficial reuse. Let's talk to Andy for a little more about this. Creeks and rivers in Delaware are routinely dredged by Denrick to maintain channels for navigation purposes. These dredged sediments are typically taken to upland disposal sites, much like the one behind me here. And these sites are costly to lease and maintain. Here in Dagsboro, Denrick is starting a pilot study to apply dredge material onto the marsh surface by applying a thin layer. About three to nine inches of sediment is applied to the marsh surface. This gives the marsh a slight boost and will hopefully allow it to keep pace with sea level rise. By applying just a small amount to the marsh surface, the plants will easily pop through and be able to continue to thrive. By returning these sediments to an adjacent wetland, we're keeping the sediments and material in the coastal system and also helping to reduce the amount of material that goes to upland disposal sites. If this project is successful in inland bays, Denrec hopes to use this process on other waterways that need to be dredged that have wetlands that are in need nearby. Not only do marshes grow vertically, but they also grow horizontally, which can be a challenge. Let's meet up with Matt to find out about some of the natural processes that affect marshes and how they can increase the effect of sea level rise. Some areas in Delaware are experiencing more coastal wetland loss than others, including here at Port Mahon Beach in Little Creek, Delaware. 50 years ago, we used to have vegetation extending 500 feet out into the Delaware Bay. As you can see now, we have open water right up against this road line. In an effort to protect this road, this rock river has placed along the entire length of it, but rather than absorbing wave energy like natural wetland would do, it sort of displaces the energy around it, which creates less ideal habitat for fish and blueprints. Eventually, this road may need to be abandoned due to sea level rise and coastal erosion. Delaware is currently looking into new, innovative ways to protect those shorelines while also increasing plant and wildlife habitat. Let's check in with Andy to hear about these new methods. Another option is to install a living shoreline. As you can see here, we have a hardened shoreline where DENRAC is going to team up with the partnership for the Delaware Estuary to install a living shoreline. In the future, we'll come out and we'll see a nice array of, of marsh grass and coconut core logs, which will look much nicer than the hardened shoreline we have here. 
A living shoreline's main goal is to protect and stabilize the shoreline and retain sediments, but it does it in a way that also improves wildlife habitat and prevents the shore from eroding. Living shorelines are made of natural materials such as coconut core fiber logs and mussels, which are a natural marsh stabilizer. The core logs and the mussels act in a way and are placed in a way that they will retain sediments behind them and allow plants to grow in. This stabilizes the marsh surface and allows it to grow both vertically and horizontally. Living shorelines are a great way to protect the shoreline from erosion while adding habitat for all types of animals. It may seem like sea level rise is not an issue that you need to consider or think about because it's going to happen so far into the future, but that's not true. We need to work together now to plan and remediate so that we can better face those challenges in the future when they come. Thank you for joining us today in our wetland classroom to learn more about the challenges that face our wetlands. For more information about sea level rise and to learn how you can help, you can visit the website www.sosdelaware.org. The next time we meet, it'll be springtime, and we'll be going out to explore some wetlands and to discover the animals that call them home. See you next time.